context to make, to make it give us the whole of what it is we need to know about one, one particular thing. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. When you find out what's significant about the way and what's the beauty of truth <laughs> and what life is all about from God, then you got the context. See what I mean? So <clears throat> Hebrew 10.25 really need context because there are so many people that take this verse out of context by thinking they know what it's saying or meaning, and they really don't. Somebody read Hebrew 10.25 for me. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as some are in the manner of some is, but exalting one another, and so much to more as ye, as ye see the day approaching. Now, as you see the day approaching, as you see what day approaching, uh, or the, what day is approaching? The coming of the, uh, the Lord. I can't hear you. The coming of uh, the Lord. The Lord is coming back. The great day. That day is fastly approaching. A whole lot of people think it's a million miles away. Hey, 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 hey. Can't think like that. He said the day is what? Fastly approaching. Yeah, where well it seemed like it's taking 24 hours a day, a real long time away and all that, man. It'll be here before you know it. Oh, come on, y'all. It's fastly approaching. <laughs> if you can comprehend that word fastly, yeah. then you got it. Because a lot of people think it might be a hundred years from now and it may not be that long. But when they go to talking about it's going to happen in May or June or something like that, don't know if that. the Holy Ghost didn't give it to them, you don't know when it's going to happen. Exactly. Right? Amen. Because they the only one that knows. He the only one that knows. Who the only one that knows? You God. God, you said they. God I'm talking about the Trinity. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know that. When I say they. <laughs> the Holy Ghost know, yeah, yeah. the Father know, and Jesus know what? Huh? huh? So they they the only one that knows. That's what I meant. Uh huh. Okay. Now let's bag up, and I want us to read nineteen and twenty. Somebody get that. Somebody do. Brother and boldness, Two people. boldness to enter into the holiness, holiness by the blood of Jesus. And 20 say by a new living way which that he has concentrated for us through the, the veil that he has to save his flesh. Now wait a minute. Look at this. It said that therefore we need to have a boldness. What do it mean to be bold? To be confident. Okay, what else it mean? Without fear, <clears throat> looking forward to it, huh? Right. Yeah, in, uh, uh, in a hurry to, to get to it, having a boldness, he said, to enter in. You can't wait till the, the door is unlocked that you can come on in. Look, look what uh, Paul is saying here. Ma, we need a boldness. When it comes time to get in something dealing with God's word or his people, we need to be bold about it. Not being what? The scripture called it slothful. What that mean, Justin? Uh, slow. Slow. Uh, <laughs> lazy. Yeah, Unconcerned. Yep. Just there. Do it if you want to. Slow. Do it if you don't. Whatever. That, he said, the scripture said not being slowful, but doing what? Having a boldness, a readiness, right, a preparedness, yeah, to enter into the the holiest. What is the holiest? His presence. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> the holiest. <laughs> but you ought to be able to write a book off this one verse, here. huh? Amen. Come on now, having a, a, a the boldness to enter the holy, the holiest. 
By the blood of Jesus. By what? The way that mama and them used to do it a hundred years ago. The way that the old folk do it down in Mississippi. It don't say that. It nope. say by a new and living way. Oh, why don't y'all come on? See, that's the kind of stuff that gets me going, get me stirred up. By a living way that he did what? Consecrated. What's another word for consecrated? Um, Take your time. Consecrated to uh, commit. Um, Leah said sanctified. How about sanctified? Right. He took it right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Which he consecrated for us. Through the veil, that is to say, through his flesh. The Lord did this for us. See? Yeah, by a new and living way. It ain't never been done like this before. Amen. Huh? Everything that, that God did with his people in the Old Testament or something, he didn't do it like this. Right. This here is brand new, ma. It's a brand new and living way. He ain't got to do the same thing the same way all the time. Oh, come on now. He can he can do something right now, Father, in a new and living way, and people won't even uh, uh, be aware of it. That's the kind of God we serve. Somebody else take 21, 22. And having an high priest over the house of God, let, uh, not 22, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with, from all evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. And so what we say, if we're taking an in-depth look into Hebrews 10 and 25, See, but this is going to help to put you on your, your diligent search for this in-depth look by dealing with these few verses here. Look what it said. Having a high priest over the house of God. Who is the high priest, uh, uh, Father? Who is our high priest? Jesus. Oh, my goodness. What made you say that? Because he is our high priest. <laughs> Give me an example of how he's our high priest. Yeah. Sacrifice. God can do anything. See, for there to be a high priest, there got to be some other priest. Come on, y'all. See, that, that would make him leader by calling them high priests over regular priests. See? Who are the regular priests that he's over? The preachers, the pastors, the ministers. The, the whole the church. Angels, the Everybody family. that's saved. Yep. He is our. Why don't you say it then? Yep. He <laughs> Here it is, mother. See, a lot of people, mom, read this, they ain't going to get the understanding of it because they're not studying it. Right. It's a having a high, high priest over the house of God. That's everyone that's saved. Amen. He is our, say it, Leah. High, high priest. Yeah. See? Okay, let us draw near in full assurance with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. What does this to us? What takes us through this, this washing and everything? It's the Holy Spirit. Or okay. Well, anybody else? Baptism. It's the Word of God. The washing comes from the Word. The more words you take on you, the more uh, 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 it washes you on the inside as well as on the outside. <laughs> Didn't he say a new living way? Mm -hmm. Well, they weren't getting this in the Old Testament. Come on now. If, it, if, 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 it wasn't in, if, if it's a new living way, it can't be in the Old Testament. Why? Because it's new. If it's in the Old Testament, it would be an old right. living way. Old living way. Right. <laughs> Come on now. See? 
In the Old Testament, God dealt with them in, another, in, in one way. Today, he's dealing with the church in another way. What, 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 what did the scripture say? It said, repeat this with me. All of Israel, All of Israel. Will, be will be saved. Who is Israel? We are. Y'all that know, don't say nothing. I want somebody I don't know. Who, who is Israel, mom? Who is Israel, my kid? Okay. Who, who do you think Israel is, Alan? Okay, Fox, who is Israel? We are. When he says all of Israel will be saved, he's talking Old Testament and New Testament. Right. When you go in the Old Testament, Abraham and all of them, all of them are, God called them to be Israel. See? But get the. Ah, Jesus. Second. Is the second Timothy? No, Philippians chapter two. Get that for me, Alma. You know Verse where it's five. at? Philippians. Verse five. Philippians comes uh, right after uh, what? Philemon. It's before Colossians, huh? It's right after Galatians. Yeah, it's after Galatians. And after Galatians, Ephesians, then Philippians. Get chapter 2. And read verse 2 and 3 for us. Read it live where we can hear. Which verse? Philippians. Chapter 2. And verse 2. Fulfill my joy by being like minded. You say it said what? And see, Israel in the Old Testament didn't feel like that about people that were not Jews. Right. They didn't feel that way about Come Gentiles. Come on, y'all. They didn't feel that way about Gentiles. No. Jews. See? I mean, they, they hated them. Right. That's why they killed them. Did things. Killed them. And, and, and some everything else. See? But the reason why I did, because this is a new and living way, we can't do it like that no more. Amen. See? So for you and I, we need to write down Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 11. We need to read those chapters because those chapters are going to tell you how Gentiles, through Jesus Christ, have become Israel. See, Jewish people in the Old Testament was called Israel, right? Right. Gentiles in the New Testament are called Israel. That's why that scripture say all of Israel will be saved. <laughs> What's that song they used to say? I want to be in the number. <laughs> when the saints go marching in. See, I told them I don't say I want to be. I'm in the number. I'll be in that number. When they go marching in. Because he opened up a new and living way for Gentiles to become Israel. Oh my goodness gracious. Don't that make you feel good? Mm-hmm. Uh, what did we stop? At 23? Some someone read 23 and 24. We're in Hebrews chapter 10. Fox, you need to hold your, what is your profession? You telling people you're a Christian. That's your profession. I'm a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> See? And then another way, you being an example. See? You're in your classes, you, 
you're here on Sunday morning, you're going through whatever come up. This, he said, hold fast. Don't lose your grip on your profession. Go ahead. What Then what did he say? The profession of our faith without wavering. How do you waver? Say you might acknowledge it, may not acknowledge it. Say you might be at the meeting and might not be at the meeting. He said, don't waver. Waver, that's waver. It's a part of waver. Yeah, see? He said, without wavering, because he is faithful, that promise. Who is that, Leah? Yeah. Jesus. Je Jesus made the promise. Ain't that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's faithful. If he's full of faith, why can't we be full of faith? Amen. Come on now. It said he Amen. promised it, that it's going to be like that. Now, since he promised it, we can be faithful and look forward to what? Receiving everything he got for us. Yeah. And then he said, not forsaking the seminar ourselves together as the sum of the Leah. Yeah. Right, oh, you it. oh, go ahead and read. 24 say, and let us consider one of to provoke unto love and to good works. Tell me about it. Tell us about it. What are you talking about? When you consider something, what are you doing? <laughs> All right. He's saying to deal with this, you need to be using this. Not just acting off of impulse or doing something just to be doing it. He said, you need to consider one another and to provoke. What do it mean to provoke? Is it all right if I, if I give you a little push sometimes? No, that, that's what you're supposed to do. Provoking, provoking but it, me, you, you, it can you, have you, a negative you, and positive right. connotation. Yeah, but see, but well, when she wasn't looking at that, yeah. it can have a negative and positive. It's good you said that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Provoking you to do good. Right. You know, right. Go out there see that? It's good, good you said it because right. it can be negative or positive. Right. But you ain't supposed to. Uh, but because negative. Right. Well, well, let me ask you this then. If if I do it. See, you can't provoke me to do But if I do it positively, how will it come? It wouldn't well, come out good, but you can't provoke me to do good now. because It right won't now. come out good. You know, gonna do it, you know how it'll come out? Okay. It'll come out in love. But if you, Everything you do is supposed to be but in love. That was supposed to be provoking. <laughs> <laughs> that. Well, if it's in love, it ain't going to be a negative provoke. It'll be a positive one. Well, I don't know how that works together, but I don't think that works either. I, I'm telling you not how it works together. If you're doing it in love, that's how yeah, it's going to work. You, say, you, say, you, know, yeah. you can't provoke What do the scripture do? say? Whatsoever you do in words or deed, do it all what? To, to the, the glory, glory of God. God. Now that's in love. Well, I ain't saying nothing about no provoke. <laughs> but you're taking it, you going no, to, not, no, you're not, taking not, it too far now. No, no, Justice is broken in half for you. Say it again, Justin, what you just said. Tell again what you said, provoking. What did you say it consists of? Provoke. What did you say it consists of? It, provoke can be denoted in a negative it has what? And positive connotation. It it's, has it's negative a, and positive yeah. connotation. Everything you do can be good or like bad, can be good, right? The way that the scripture is saying it is a good way. He's telling you to be somebody's mother or daddy in the spirit. He's telling you to provoke them, to encourage them, to bless them, to lift them up. That's what it means by provoke. But see, the... the Oh my goodness! I'm I'm glad she I'm glad she saved because she <laughs> oh the negative provoking. I mean that's 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 really something, and that's not what the scripture is talking about. It says provoke one another unto love and good works. If the provoking is negative, it won't be love in it. It won't be good works in it. Yeah. So that's evidence that this is a good provoking. You can provoke me like this all the time. Right, okay. Provoking. And I, you ain't got to worry about me getting upset. I'm going to love it. 
Because it's coming from God. This is the word. The word. He said what he mean. Oh, look at that. Yeah, provoke unto love. <laughs> Pro provoke him unto love. He didn't say provoke to hate or provoke to fight or provoke to cussing. He said provoke unto love. Yeah. Not forsaking the similar of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but encouraging one another, exhorting. So much the more as you see the day of the Lord. What? Approaching. Vastly approaching. It, it ain't approaching slow, it's coming fast. We got King Oh, what did you got? You read your. I read man, because I was the first one read that scripture. It said, it said, not the second day of assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exalting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Right, but they got different. Yeah, they got different. Mm -hmm. That day is fastly approaching. I can remember a few days ago, it was cold. Already we in the spring. <laughs> we we in the spring. We right. days ago it was cold. Oh, and it's going to be... A few days of that go, it was It was cold. 70 yesterday. Right. And, and, and it'll be summer before you know it. <laughs> Fastly approaching. Right. See what it says? <laughs> we all have the taste. Yeah. Fastly approaching. I'm sitting here chilling right now. <laughs> uh, when you look at verse 25, Mother, that second word said, forsaking the assembly. Not forsaking. Yeah, but I'm just talking about those three words, forsaking the assembly. What is See? Me? Pardon me? It, it hard, whatever it is. No, no, verse 25. It says, it says, forsaking the assembly. He said, not forsaking. In other words, forsake. What does it mean to forsake? To abandon. To, ba yeah. Yeah. to leave. To abandon. Uh, do anybody think this word forsake could get deeper than that? Yeah. Huh? A great example of this word, Emma, what it's talking about, forsaken, is when someone in the armed forces go AWOL. See? They didn't just forsake it, they went AWOL. They, they don't want nothing else to do with it. They, they completely leaving it, huh? Deserted. There it is. It's equivalent to the word desertion. And the worst thing that anyone could do is get saved and then desert Jesus. Oh, come on now. I'm trying to let it sink in for a minute. Y'all really need to see this. <laughs> he, this is not a suggestion. It's a command. He said, do not forsake to assemble yourself together. It's a, he telling you to do something. And don't never stop it. When you get saved, Reverend Henry, can you really uh, forsake Jesus if you really, really saved? It can happen and it can't happen. Well, now, I when I say it can happen, it can happen if a person is unlearned. Right, but I read that If a person so hasn't been that, taught in the scriptures, if a person have, doesn't have a healthy prayer life, if a, a person doesn't have a life of fellowship with Jesus, it, it can't just be with people. It's got to be with his people. It's got to be with him. If you don't have a health of a fellowship with him and 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 do things. Okay. Right, but 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 you can't say, but you can't say really been saved because once a person gets saved, it doesn't it doesn't kick in, it doesn't uh, take a hold on them ten years after they confess it. When a person gets saved, it happened right there on the spot. Come on now, <laughs> it's an instantaneous action. 
when you receive Christ into your heart, it happens that very second. It don't happen later on to come to some worship services, do some fellowship. And that. No, no, no. It happens that very second that you ask him to become your Lord and Savior. Huh? The scriptures say he steps right into your heart. That's when it happens. Yeah, if you really, really, uh, you know. If you know you well, there ain't but one way to get well, saved, you know and that's it. You know how I talk about this saw, this different kind of saw, and, and how to, you know, how to, uh, uh, Yeah, know, the good saw, and, and right, yeah. Right, how it sprang up, and then if they're not deep enough in there, then how the saw come out, and they just wither up, and they wither. And that's how they can wind up. That's how they can wind up forsaking the assembly. But I'm talking about when does a person get saved? They get saved the very second Jesus steps into their heart. Right. And they got to grow from that point on. Yeah, it don't, it don't happen. You got to be in church 10 years to get there. <laughs> right. right. And you may not live that long. Okay, you can't go. You if can't. you're in church 10 years, and then you're talking about God in that world, then something is. is no, 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 no. Then it's, doesn't it talk about growing grace? Doesn't it talk? What we got to be taught. Right. There's a there's many things that suspender may hear me say that's not scripture. Right. I ain't got no business not saying what the scripture says. Yeah, a lot of other people. But there's many people that's doing it. A lot of other people. That's why you have to use your blood for yourself. Yes, yeah. and by and by the same token, you got to learn it for yourself. That's why he says study. It ain't gonna come from saying, "Lord, in the shepherd shall not want." You got to do. You got to go deeper than that. How he? How is he your shepherd? When is he your shepherd? In what way is he your shepherd? You got to answer all the questions: Who, what, when, where, and why? You got to deal with all of it through study. If I tell you the Lord is my shepherd, he'd leave me in, in the a green pastures and beside the still water. What are you doing that for? I eat steak and cornbread and, and huh? Uh. I don't eat grass and, and, and uh, just eat grass and drink water, right? right. But sheep do. And, and, because, and because he's our shepherd, we become spiritual sheep. And you got to see the way that he feeds them, that he does it in the same manner he'll do with natural sheep. Right. Amen. He'll provide us, he'll lead us, God. That's why we got to study this one. Amen. He's a false sheep. Not necessarily false what sheep. If, if a person him. ain't taught, haven't been taught, it don't make them false. They accepted Jesus as their personal savior. But they just haven't went after it in the right manner. Huh? Some people think once you get baptized, everything else falls in line by itself. It don't happen like no. that. No, you got to grow. You got to study. You got to grow in it. That's when you test it the most. Got to grow in it. Right? Yeah. So, what are the, the members at? This is a sign of not growing. What are the members at? Okay. See my point? Yeah. Where, where there? <laughs> Sunday back in there is uh, but you can hear the flow banging. But I don't hear nothing now. So the question is, where the members are? It's all about growing in grace. Growing in grace. Growing in grace. And when I'm not going after the things of God in grace, I'm gonna miss it. The, the sayings say, if you miss it, you, you miss missed it. it. See? <laughs> one is the start, and, and the other one is talking about the end result. You missed it with ED on there. If you miss it, you missed it. Might not be able to get it back again. That's why he's saying we got to do it through provoking, through considering. Through everything that he's saying, do in these few, in these five verses here, we need to be doing that. Not to be a uh, somebody to see or some mess to happen or something, but for our own salvation. 
for our own relation, huh? <laughs> Everything that God is calling us to do. He say, if you love me. How come he put a preposition on the front of it? Because he's giving you a choice. That's right. See? You may not want to do it. He said, but if you love me, then you'll keep them. But if you don't keep them, you answering your own door. <laughs> you already knew you wasn't going to do it. So that's when the chastising and other things take place. Okay. So that word forsaken could get to the place of desertion. And boy, that's really something to think about, ain't it, Justin? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes, it is. Amen. Some, some not coming to church and, and fellowship in the door and everything need to be done could get as badly as desertion. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be like that. The Lord has been too good to us, ain't he? Amen. Yes, he Nothing has. can come up yeah, that... <coughs> huh? What if he deserted us? What would, what would we do? We couldn't do nothing. Okay. Look in, that, look in the armed forces. Many people in leadership in the armed forces may be out of order when it comes to dealing with people under them. Right. But the bottom line, it's geared to bring them up in a good way, ain't it? To be a blessing to them. To help them do things the right way and, 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 and learn, go to school in there, everything. But Jesus has the same thing in, in heart for his people. Yeah, as long as they don't misuse their authority. Like but but that's people, what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it, once you do that, God ain't in the picture. Right. Mm -hmm. mis, 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 misusing, abusing, anything. God ain't in that. Mm -hmm. Because God is what? Love. love. And you ain't gonna find stuff like that in love. Right. If somebody is in love with God, then you shouldn't wonder, can they love you? He'll teach them how to do it. Ain't that right? Yes. Everything we need, God got it. See? So what he says is, forsaken of the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Don't you know God know everybody that's doing it? Yes, he do. He you know everything. <laughs> yeah. He you know what you think before you think. Yeah. He know he he know if your heart is not in it. Huh? Yeah. Whatever you do, your heart ought to be in it. It's not a game. Right? right. It's not for showing. It's a lifestyle change. And if he done saved us, our heart needs to be in this. Look where you could have wound up at. All them people up under the bridge down the lower walk. Lord have mercy. My heart goes out to them. That's why you have to make up your own mind if you want to be saved. If you don't make up your mind, you're lost. Well, it, it takes that. It takes everything you got. It don't just take part of you. It takes everything, right? Yeah, he don't just want some of us, he want all of us. Amen. Yeah, okay. And so, uh, individually, we are the body of Jesus Christ. And it's good to take inventory of our lives and not become complacent. What does that mean, to become complacent? Comfortable uh, where you are. Huh? Comfortable where you are. See, just go a little bit, get a little bit, or go a little way and think that's enough. Right. Can't do it like that. That won't work. Yeah. When Jesus died for the sins of mankind, who did he do it for? For us. He did it for the entire world. What's it, what they said, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything you can come up with. He did it for them right. because he wants all of mankind to be saved. saved. To be saved. See? And that's why he did this. So he tells us we need to take inventory 
of our own life. Don't accept it from somebody else. Well, you don't look like you're doing so and so and so and so. And no. take it of yourself. You got to die for yourself. Yeah. That's take right. inventory of your own life and not become complacent. Lukewarm. Half hearted. Oh, come on, yeah. Huh? <laughs> not become complacent. Do it when you want to do it. It's got to be an everyday thing. You need to read some scripture. You need to do some praying and things like that. When? Every single day, all of the time. Every day. Every day, all of the time. You work a job. You may leave here going to work. And the day seems just like it did every day. Look at them people on television. They went to work and all you know, everybody in there shooting with rifles and everything. And people that got killed and all that. But it was just another day when it started out. Right. But that's why you need to be prayed up, praised up, and worshiped up before you go there. It's you don't know what's going to happen in there. What is the tenets, T-E-N-E-N-T, -E -E or the specialty of Satan? Of what? Satan. What is the tenets of Satan? What is what what do he specialize in? Got to be three dimensions. He specialized in killing, stealing, and destroying. John ten ten. See? And it's of the utmost important that we keep that up front. And I know I'm going around a hundred people. I better pray for I go up in there. Right. Right. Well, we better pray okay. yeah, right when you be setting up in your house and you don't know what's happening because now you know what Well, that just to go to house show house. You, so gotta you got to do it everywhere. You got to step outside. Right. It can be in your house. own house. Because bullets come inside and you know <laughs> well, what you be Wow, seen. look at that. Yep. Yep. Ain't that something? Yeah. See, I just said one thing going around people. But she said, just be in the house where ain't nobody but you and your family. <laughs> People have got shot sleep in the bed. You in the bed sleep. Look at this. Look at this. this Look at this. So, right. this, this oh, happened. my goodness. When they, when they shot that girl, yeah, that See? Crazy. And so that's how beneficial it is to be prayed up. That's right. Because those people sat out there and had a baby child. Worshipped up. These kids got shot. Praised up. And praised up. Because something could happen at any time. But you have the assurance that wherever Jesus is, you'll be also. He gives us that assurance in his word. Yeah, because like you say, we don't know when he's coming back, he comes. <coughs> and just like you say, you can be setting up, like I say, I'm setting up talking, I'm I'm talking to my husband and he run around and fail. So yeah. you know, you ain't got to just you don't know when he's coming. See? Mm-hmm. But the 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 word is what? Be ready. Be ready. Always. Be ready. Always be ready. Yeah. See, that's the scripture. So we're going to take a little inventory, I mean a little uh, 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 context walking to see something about what all this is talking about, what Paul is really saying in Hebrews 10. Let's go in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Where is it at? Huh? You get it, say amen. No, 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 no. We're getting context to Hebrew. Okay, we, we got a way to go through Hebrew. Yeah, yeah, we're going back. <clears throat> what did I say, go? First Corinthians chapter 6. Okay. And then chapter 6, someone read a couple of verses for us, starting at verse 12 and 13. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not ex expedient. expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be bought under the power of any. Uh -huh. Meat by the belly, and the belly for meat, but God shall destroy both, both of them. And them. Now the body is not for qualification, but for, for the Lord, and the Lord. Father Did y'all hear this? Amen. Amen. Look what he said. All things are lawful not to me. But all things are not expedient. 
What do you mean by expedient? Not helpful. Not what? Helpful. That's what my, my uh -huh. said. Uh-huh. See, another word is not good. All things are not good for So it, it, when, when they're talking about things, it's talking about through every, throughout everyday living. It's, huh? Oh, it's something that we really have to get into because he letting us know that Christian, say, say this with me. Christian, Christian liberty, liberty. Christian liberty can be, can be abused. abused. Abused, yep. Boy, I wish some of y'all could hear this. <laughs> this thing is ringing in my head. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Christian liberty can be abused. We reading it. What do you mean, how? Paul talk about it. He just said all things are lawful to me, but all things are not necessarily good for me. Expedient. All things are lawful for me. But I won't be brought under the power of any. What's another word for power? How about bondage? And see, and that's what study is all about. We got to get into it because if we don't, if we don't care nothing about what we read right now, ain't no need, miss, ain't no need going in Hebrew ten twenty five, because it's saying the same thing these scriptures are. See, come on, somebody with uh, 14, 15. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise God have up. both raised. No, mine doesn't say that. Okay, go ahead. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Just as God raised up who? The Lord. The Lord. Jesus. Okay. You, th you think he just got up out the grave by himself? Who else had a part in, in his resurrection? Look at that. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All three of them had a part in it. <laughs> and we really need to be able to see that. I mean, we did a lesson on that. If, 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 he, if Jesus didn't do anything uh, when he was... Uh, living before he died by himself. What makes us think he went through death by himself? Yeah. And go through nothing he did was without the Father and the Holy Ghost. I gave it to you in where? Second Timothy. No, I mean Colossians. Colossians two and nine. What does it say? In Jesus Christ lives the fullness of the Father and the Holy Ghost. They went through everything he went through. Amen. And they had to do that for it to come out their way, God's way. He didn't come out man's way, it came out God's way. Yeah. And that's the new and living way that we're reading about. It's God's way, it ain't man's way. Uh huh. Where did we stop? God has raised them up and raised us up too by his own power. Yes, sir. F 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Oh, Lord. Mama, you here? You mighty quiet. I'm listening. Yeah, but it ain't time to just listen. It's time to say something. He said, do what? Don't you know that, that I, I like to say it that way. Because when I put say it that way, I put emphasis on it. Don't you know that your bodies are members of, Christ? of Jesus Christ? The temple of the he said, Spirit. shall I take the members of Jesus Christ and make them become members of a what? Prostitute. What is a holler? Prostitute. Oh, my goodness. It is. What you say, man? He said, I asked him to say. You didn't know? No, I didn't. Oh, come on. I didn't. All right. <laughs> she didn't know. What did make the members of your body members of? He said, a holla. 
Yeah. What do we say after that? God forbid. What do words mean, Justin? Certainly not. Yeah. God would never think of doing of, of, of doing something like this. Right. Someone else. Take the next one. What verse was it? What, what? 16. Okay. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one, by, uh, is one with him in spirit. Now, wait a minute. See the difference? Yeah. yeah. See the difference? Then being with human beings and being with the Lord. Amen. With them, you're one body. That's as far as you can get. But with him, you become one spirit. One and spirit. what spirit is that? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy spirit. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Someone else. Take the next two. 17 and 18. Free fornication. Every sin that a man do it is, is without the body. Uh-huh. But he that co committed fornication sinned against the own body. And 19 say, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the, of, of the Holy Ghost? Look at this. You, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. What is that yeah. price that we've been bought with? The blood yeah. of Jesus. He died for us. We are not our own. No You've more. been bought with a price. That's and guess, price. guess what? It what? says it more than one time in the scripture. Amen. To give you a continued remember, Mom, that you've been bought. He bought you the right way. Amen. He didn't do it like they did back in slavery days. He did it the right way. But it's doing slavery today. I give this to Yeah. Look at this I give you this to this for her. Well, I can tell you love Bible class. Amen. You've been bought. You've been bought with a price. You've been bought. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify in your body. And in your spirit, because both of them belong to, to God. To God. See that last verse? Amen. They belong to God. Yeah. So this is called context. This is a another reason, my key, why he's giving you. Don't forsake the sum of yourself together. If you're supposed to be here, be here. Amen. You know you got to eat, you're supposed to be at your job, be yeah. there. Ain't that right? That's right. Yeah. That's where you got to eat. How did he say? He said, do things indecent and in order. Oh, huh? Decent and in order. Oh, it didn't say indecent. He said, let all things be done decently and in order. It's saying the same thing. He's just giving it to you in a different way. All right. Let's take one more. Right here where we at. Chapter 7. You ready? In chapter 7, someone read. Uh, in verses six, 16 and 17. Read it. For what knowest thou, O wife? Whether thou shalt save thy husband, or how knowest thou? So what is Paul saying? He's saying, don't you know? Again. What? Knowest thou, O who? Whether you what? Have saved your husband? Or how? Thou knowest, O man, whether you save your wife? He asks him questions. But as God has distributed to every man, as the Lord Jesus has called everyone, so let them walk as it ordained in all of the churches. But everybody ain't walking like that. 
if we receive the same calling from the same God and the same life and everything else and the things of God, why aren't all of us walking like that? Amen. Just coming on Sunday morning is not the crux of your blessings. Huh? We need to be in the classes. That's where the beauty, that's where the meat, that's where the blessings lie. Not just coming in here dancing on Sunday morning. Your time, huh? your time is up. Yeah, but you know I stayed in bed. I know that. You know that. <laughs> we say that. Okay. <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's so of the utmost importance because I really want to take you all through chapter 12 mm -hmm. in this same book to show you about the beauty of it. Then we need to jump back in Romans 6 for a minute and then go back into 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I was saving that for last. Because all of this, mother, is context to Hebrews 10, 25. I understand that, and I'm ready to. <laughs> but you all know there is no food. Y'all told me you're going to give me donations, and not it? Yeah, we're going to give donations, but we... Uh, I'm just saying, we didn't give them. So, Leah, okay. you come up here and inspect the, the uh, I know she's looking for this. That's fine. We can still. And, all right. Uh, come on. Come oh, praise God. All right. We're going to take donations up then? Yeah, we can take donations. Okay. <clears throat> Beautiful. That'll be grilled chicken for two weeks. 